Hi, it's Dwyer. It's October 20th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Just as a treat for viewers, uh, after a fight takes place, I'm going to release some of the pre-fight videos that I've made for premium subscribers here in the members only service just so you can see up or down how I handicapped the fight before the fight took place right so when you see a post fight free play video just understand I recognize that the fights already taken place I've had to go into the YouTube system to make it available to the broader public right the members Get the benefit of having the pick when the pick's relevant before the fight takes place. The public gets the benefit of seeing how I saw the fight before the fight actually took place. Let's talk about Tim Zhu yesterday. Folks, he got roughed up by Backrun Mutazaleev. Understand, Backrun was the champion going into the fight. He didn't win the title from Tim Zhu. <clears throat> Tim Zhu, coming off of a loss, was trying to win the title from him, right? Let's also be a little bit critical of boxing here. Backrum was the mandatory to Jamel Charlo at 154 pounds for more than three years. Folks, that should never happen. Let me also point out, too, that Backroom, unbeaten as I make this video, right, had to take tune-up fights. Now, granted, part of the blame belongs with Backroom, who took step-aside money and also had tune-up fights during that three-plus year period where he was the mandatory. But understand what that means. It means that this fighter was world class that entire period of time. In other words, he became the mandatory years ago, years ago, before he went on and was awarded the crown. Let's also talk about Tim Zhu, and I hope the Dimitri Bevel fan base, and I'm one of them, listens to what I have to say carefully here. <clears throat> Tim Zhu lost a heartbreaking fight to Sebastian Fundora. The reason it's heartbreaking isn't the fact that Fundora won, right? This is a gladiator sport. It's just the fact that a cut opened up, might have been caused by an elbow, and Tim Zhu, of course, had to go through the 12 rounds bleeding profusely, having to deal with problems with his eyes as the blood was draining down from his head into his eyes and battled on and barely lost the fight, right? It was just the unfortunate instance where even today we don't know what would happen if Fundora fought Tim Zhu and Tim Zhu didn't get it cut, right? We just don't know. And so that, of course, was Tim Zhu's first loss. But I need for folks to understand that a fighter is vulnerable coming off of that first loss. Right? The rest of us have had setbacks professionally. Right? Maybe you're in an office. Maybe you didn't get that promotion. Maybe you're the CEO and maybe that product launch didn't quite have the profit margin you thought it was going to have. Right? Maybe... You know, the landlord is in trouble and wants to increase your rent. Um, and, of course, you understand that you're going to have to change the address for your business because you're not going to pay the new rent and uh, yada yada. Right? So the rest of us have had professional problems. But these fighters are younger. Right? Many of them, most of them, are in their 20s and early 30s. 
right? They've been the man. Their ecosystem involves a manager who no doubt's fawning, right? Is telling him, hey, you know, you're going to be champion someday or you're going to be the next plug in the great fighter, right? Roy Jones, Benny Leonard, uh, Aaron Pryor. Let's name some exotic great fighters, right? And you can imagine these guys, you know, they're making sacrifices. They have spouses or girlfriends who understand that when the fighter's in camp, she is not going to see her man for weeks at a time. Uh, think about the sacrifices. You and I go out with the family to the restaurant, and yes, this brother's ordering regular soda, not uh, diet soda, right? Yes, I'm ordering dessert. You know, yes, I'm ordering extra portions. Yes, I'm reaching for the bread bowl. I wouldn't be able to do that if I'm trying to make weight at 154 pounds. And some of these guys are big. Back room here is a six-footer. And he's making weight at 154 pounds. Right? So there's a whole lifestyle investment that these boxers are making. Now, many of them do because they're the next big thing. They're unbeaten, right? Who could possibly beat them, given the work they've put in, right? Given all the big news that they've heard. In Tim Zhu's case, too, understand what it's like being raised where dad's a Hall of Famer. You're not even the only boxer in the family. You're trying to live up to dad's expectations. So let's talk about something that fans don't consider enough of. Gamblers don't consider enough of. Tim Zhu had a loss. It was his last fight, Sebastian Fundora. So while he is getting over the drama that is a loss where he has to get 15 stitches put into his head, while he's recovering from that, his manager and his promoter, and kudos to them, they arranged for him to fight for the title. In other words, our guy fell off, we'll get that belt back. Right, here's his backroom guy. Now, understand the mistake they made. Is the fight in Australia where Tim Zhu can sleep in his own bed and can, you know, get over the trauma of a loss involving a cut where the cut affected the visual as well as his performance? No, this fight's in Florida, in the United States. Now, we understand there are many parts to boxing. We understand when a Goliath like Amazon comes to you, and says, hey, we want the fight to happen at this time. We'll pay big money so our Prime members can actually see the fight. When that happens, and when you understand that Tim Zhu also wants to extend his brand in the United States, and who's going to say no to him? Right, this is a guy who was supposed to fight Keith Thurman in the United States. In other words, Tim Zhu's the talent. The people around him are trying to keep the talent happy. So Tim Zhu, you know, wants to fight in the United States. Nobody is going to say no to him. So let's talk about some other points here that need to be raised. Right? A lot of these fighters, a lot, research it come from broken homes, right? As they used to say in the 60s, sometimes Papa was a rolling stone. Now, Costa Zoo, and keep in mind, Tim Zoo, long career, has already been a champion. But Costa Zoo, the Hall of Fame dad, hadn't seen Tim fight for several years. Apparently, according to some reports, Costa Zoo hadn't seen Tim fight from Tim's first fight, first or second fight. 
So, of course, Costa Zhu shows up for this fight. As if the drama of coming off a loss, fighting in some place other than your home country, isn't taxing enough. Right here you have Dad in the crowd, and Dad is not close to having been a candidate for Father of the Year. Right, Dad's excuse, by the way, is that he has a second family. Yeah, this is what happens in dysfunctional setups. Dad's excuse is that he has a second family, has kids in that second family who are young kids, has businesses that he has to tend to. And so he hasn't had time for his boxing champion son. Folks, I'm not making this up. Google it. So, with that background, the casino somehow made, believe it or not, the reigning champion, the guy fighting Tim Zhu, a greater than four to one underdog. Think about that. Right? Let me just say, too, Tim Zhu comes in. The other guy's taller than him. The other guy has a reach advantage on him. The other guy is a puncher. More importantly, the other guy has higher volume. Folks, this is a recipe for disaster if you're the challenger, as Tim Zhu was for Backroom's title. Right? Understand, in the normal course, if you don't get a knockdown as the challenger, the other guy's going to land more punches than you. But right? how are you going to win the title if... The champion you're fighting doesn't hit the canvas and lands more shots than you. So Tim Zhu comes in. Tim Zhu is thinking going to the body and getting a stoppage. Right, folks? It's hard to go to the body against a champion with a punch who can tuck the big shot in the middle of a combination. Right, back rum is a combination puncher. His forte is throwing hooks. He's also advanced. He can lead with the power shot when he wants to. So I want people to look at the film of this fight. Again, it, it's on Prime. It might still be in your system, right? Because typically when things air on Prime, they let Prime viewers watch it a few times after it airs. And you're going to notice that there's a home run punch that Backroom has. Now, Backroom, to his credit, is actually two-handed. Here, he didn't really have to be because one punch in particular is dropping Tim Zhu. And it's his left hook. But understand, there are Backroom fights out there where he's stopping guys with right hands. You're talking about a ringer. Right, a guy who's been world-class for years to the point where Jamel Charlo, and let's be fair to Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo, of course, was trying to unify the title at 154 and succeeded in doing so. It wasn't like Jamel Charlo was on the beach avoiding calls like his brother, right? Cheap shot, agreed. I'm just speculating, I'm not making a statement of fact. Right? No, Jamel Charlo was out fighting guys. Just not this guy. For years. That should be a red flag for people. So here, just understand what happens. They're in the pocket to the point where, look at the forehead of the taller guy. He actually has a red spot on it. Right? They're in the pocket Backroom forces a shootout. Then we find out that Tim Zhu is not defensively blessed. Right? Tim Zhu, like Anthony Joshua, is a hunter who's unaccustomed to people moving toward him. Right? These are the guys in the sport who have big names but they're accustomed to guys moving away from them. Opponents have bought into the idea that this guy's a knockout puncher. Tim Zhu's five eight and a half. 
right? Just to understand what happened here, folks. Tim Zhu came in. The other guy wants a pocket. The other guy's not moving away from him. The other guy views himself as having a punch. Both of these guys have very high knockout ratios. So, of course, the bullets start flying, and you had a guy here with better defense. Backroom. Right? Backroom has a construct where it looks like he's throwing arm punches. He's throwing these hooks, but you notice as he throws a hook, the other hand is up to block shots. In my opinion, defensive fighters think of things that offensive fighters simply don't think about. So understand what happens in this fight. Backroom sets up Tim Zhu and throws a great left hook. It drops Tim Zhu. Right, folks? Tim Zhu, of course, is straight out of an old western. Right? You know the gunslinger who gets shot, who can barely walk, but damn it, he's going to limp his way through this, isn't he? Right? If it's a shootout and you get hit with a bullet by itself, unless that bullet hits you in the heart, that shouldn't be enough to stop you. Right? Tim Zhu is operating on a code. Folks, it gets so bad that the referee who lets the fight continue, the ref's magnificent, right? Two guys did an incredibly outstanding job. Three guys. Backroom who wins the fight. The referee who is masterful. And the interpreter, we'll talk about him. Right, but understand it gets so bad for Tim Zhu who is blown out never quite gets his full balance that the referee who realizes where they are in the round, right? Tim Zhu gets dropped late in one round and the referee, even though Zhu, when he gets up, looks a little bit staggered. The ref had the common sense to know we're almost at the end of the round. I'm going to give this guy the time to go to his corner and to sit on a stool to recover. But it gets so bad that even that ref had to say to Tim Zhu, hey, if you go down one more time, I'm going to call the fight. And trust me, the action was such that you understood that was fair. Right? As it was, keep in mind, <laughs> the ref wasn't the only one thinking that. Because the fight ends with Tim Zhu's corner throwing in the towel. So of the three knockdowns, just to understand, they're primarily caused by left hooks. One of them is a right hand, but in the exchange, the left hook devastates Tim Zhu, who never figures out how to park his right hand. Now, this is something I mentioned in an earlier video. Tyson Fury's going to have to figure out, right? Because I understand righties go into a fight and say, I need to land a few right hands here to shake this guy, right? The problem is when the guy is either two-handed or has a spectacular left hand, you've got to make sure the guy's not in a position to throw that left hand when you throw your right hand. Because then you're going to get countered to death. Simply put here, Tim Zhu did not do the math. Right? He comes in, he's trying to throw right hands against a two-handed guy with an excellent left hook. So he gets knocked down, never fully recovers, never figures out how to block Backroom's left hook. And of course, Backroom being complicated... One time he tucks the left hook in the middle of a combination. Another time he leads with it. In other words, you don't even have a rhythm that you can rely on. Well, you're thinking, okay, here's the guy. He's going to throw this, that. Then he's going to throw his real punch. No, complicated guys are like jazz musicians. They're mixing it up. 
back rum mixes it up. So Tim Zhu, who is calm, who has perspective, congratulated back rum after the fight, said he's the man at 154. I need for people to fully grasp what that might mean. Right? I believe strongly in Virgil Ortiz. Let's call out some names here. But Virgil Ortiz got beaten up in his last fight. I personally thought he lost his last fight. You can be bullish on a fighter and admit that a fighter's been beaten. Sebastian Fundora won wonders. Given that Tim Zhu defensively is a bit challenged. One wonders how Fundora, with Tim Zhu partially blinded from blood pouring down off the top of his head, wasn't able to stop Tim Zhu. Right? Understand, too, Fundora himself lost off a body shot to Brian Mendoza, right, earlier, before his fight against Tim Zhu. Let's just say things have gotten a lot more interesting. A lot more interesting at 154 pounds. I'm just telling you too that of course you have fighters other than Jamel Charlo who still looms out there but who has been inactive and who now is in his 30s. Right? You have Erickson Lubin. He's a guy whose name you need to follow. Right? He's one of the premier body punchers in boxing. But he got beaten by Sebastian Fundora and his face looked disfigured. Right, Lubin then had another fight where there's at least 45%, right? The same amount of people who believe, the same percentage, who believe Bevel beat Peturbiev, and I'm one of them, saw that Erickson Lubin fight against some young guy, I forget his name here, on this live video, and the young guy tuned up Erickson Lubin. Lubin was awarded the decision. But understand, you know, supporters of the young guy feel their guy got robbed. So let's just say 154 is a bit congested. Madrimov would be interesting against Backrum, the problem with Madrimov, who's a better athlete than Backrum, is that Madrimov insists on backing out of the pocket. Somebody, someplace, is going to have to explain it to me. Right? Madrimov needs to be more of a Nigel Ben. Right? Invite himself into your home for dinner and then stick around... <laughs> and then stick around for seconds at your table, right? I believe Madrimov would have beaten Terrence Crawford, clearly, right? I'm not sure about the scoring in the fight, as it was, right? But clearly, I believe Madrimov would have beaten Terrence Crawford if he would have treated Crawford as a welterweight visiting 154 pounds, I thought Madrimov was too deferential to Terence Crawford, and rather than be in the pocket rough and tumble, like Roberto Duran was the first fight against Ray Leonard, right? Or like Roberto Duran was in his fight against Pimpino Cuevas. Look up that fight. Madrimov kept moving around, right? He, he didn't seem to realize that he was the heavier man and that he was the better athlete. Well, here, what Madrimov's going to have to do, this is what great defensive fighters do. If you're going to beat Backrum, you're going to have to deal in the world of planes where you come inside and you somehow find a way to have your shoulder tilted to where as someone throws shots on you, the hooks, which is Backrum's primary punch, have to go through your shoulder to hit you. Think Joe Fraser, right? Where his head's down, he's bobbing and weaving. You have a problem finding his head because of the movement. And then when you throw a shot, Joe is 
Joe always has his head tucked. His head's not up free and clear. His chin's not easy to find. Right? Another fighter with body armor, we'll call it, is Ken Norton. Right? That's, you know, so let's just say, welcome to the new 154-pound weight class. Tim Zhu now has two losses. Virgil Ortiz should have one loss. Jamel Charlo hasn't been fighting. If he decides to come back, he's going to face major opposition. From what I'm hearing, Terrence Crawford actually wants to continue his career whether or not Canelo decides to fight him. Right, folks? These are choppy waters right now at 154 pounds. As I said in an earlier video, if Jaron Ennis wants to challenge himself, let his body gain weight and fight here. Unifying 154 pounds, folks, is going to be a challenge across the board. Don't rule out this guy. One of the things that Sebastian Fundora has over opponents is that Fundora is something like 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, and he weighs 154 pounds. Understand, he's already lost off a body shot. This guy, Bakra, is a six-footer at 154 pounds. He's a hooker. He's a combination puncher. He's higher volume just like Fundora is. Right? If he slips Fundora's jab, do we know who wins that fight? Anyway, those are my thoughts. Look at the left hook. If you watch the video of this Tim Zhu fight, Tim Zhu's unprepared for it. Tim Zhu has no idea, and I mean no idea, how to block this guy's left hook. Right? Understand, too, this is that rare fighter who goes hunting for Tim Zhu. He's physically bigger. Let me just give a piece of advice here to Amazon Prime. Right? Rather than tell us the weights that the guys weighed in at, at the weigh-in, it would have been good in this fight to hear the weights that the guys were entering the ring to. Food for thought. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Folks, this outcome was not a fluke. Backrum hits hard. Backram is world class. He was the mandatory for more than three years to Jamel Charlo. Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.